Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a special episode of Till All Are One. And this I might do every once in a while because I'm actually really intrigued by this movie. And since it's part of the Hasbro universe, and I'm really hoping that it's part of a shared movie universe, because typically I'm not, you know, big on shared movie universes. Like Marvel did it really well. And of course, DC, if they do comic book ones, I'm kind of interested in, in those to some degree. Uh, but I don't automatically want it. And same with uh, this, although. With G.I. Joe and Transformers, I've actually wanted this crossover since the first Transformer movie. Um, in the first movie of Transformers, the Michael Bay ones, they had a, a unit or a group called uh, Sector 7. And I was really hoping that by the end of the movie, they would, uh, you know, kind of like, I guess, disavow or not disavow, but maybe just like uh, shut down the department of Sector 7 and be like, OK, we can't be in secret anymore. We got to be more out in the open. And, you know, Josh Duhamel, you're, you know, the first member of Team G.I. Joe or something like that. Like I was as, as stupid and fanboy as that sounds. But that's, you know, I was younger back then and I really wanted that as a fan. And I was kind of hoping, why didn't you just name these characters G.I. Joe after a while? And you could have just had concurrent G.I. Joe Transformer movies going, you know, since the beginning. And that would have been freaking awesome, I feel. Um but uh, but so when I heard this news that they were doing another G.I. Joe movie and that it was a prequel and it was going to be based on Snake Eyes, I was at least intrigued because I'm like, all right, well, that's cool because that reminds me of what they were doing recently with Bumblebee where they just take one character from the mythos and they're like, let's do an origin story with this character. And it's it's technically, you know, it's like a fan favorite character. Snake Eyes, arguably one of the most popular, you know, uh, G.I. Joe members out there. And Bumblebee, especially after the success of the Michael Bay movies, became one of the most popular Transformers out there. So I was like, wow, this would be cool if Bumblebee was like a prequel and set in the 80s and then Snake Eyes is is kind of a prequel. And then as they make a Transformer movie and a G.I. Joe movie they can maybe cross the universes so i don't know if they're gonna do that but that's just kind of my, my fanboy wish but i figured since it's still part of the hasbro family and i'm intrigued in the movie and i don't have a gi joe show and i'm not i'm definitely not going to start one because i don't know how often we'll do these but i figured every once in a while you'll get an episode of till all are one that's gi joe snake eyes movie focused and uh and hopefully you guys are into that if you're not you know feel free to let me know in the comments uh but i you know i feel like i kind of want to track this movie especially when I saw these pictures so uh, what you're seeing you're seeing video on screen because I'm just recording the audio for this because I'm still not feeling well and it's just easier for me to to do this than doing the video um, but I, I figured you know we'll play some of this footage and just loop it and put some images in here that I got off Instagram of the cast and them basically sharing their excitement and their some of the behind the scenes stuff of the movie and since there were so many you know, actors in this that are sharing stuff openly on social media, I figured it would give us some good visual content to for me to lay this voiceover on. So G.I. Joe on January 9th, uh, there's this great post that the G.I. Joe movie posted where it said, uh, the Snake Eyes cast and crew talk to press and receive a blessing at the Hijinwa Shrine uh, to start production in Japan. And hopefully I didn't butcher the pronunciation of that name. Um, and executive producer Jeff Waxman, stunt coordinator Kenji Tanagaki, uh, Takahiro Hira, who plays Kenta in the movie, uh, Haruki Abe, who plays Akiko, uh, Henry Golding, uh, who plays Snake Eyes in the movie. And I saw a lot of, so this is how little I remember about the GI Joe. I forgot that GI Joe or that Snake Eyes was a white guy. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen, you know, or, or kind of caught up on G.I. Joe. And so I wouldn't say I'm like a huge hardcore fan of it, uh, but I do like the character Snake Eyes and I, I've liked uh, his look especially. And uh, and I like the universe of G.I. Joe to an extent, and you know, but I don't know it as well as I know Transformers. So I thought that would also be a fun aspect of this show is until all are one, since I know a lot about Transformers, to cover something I don't know a ton of. So I, I, I kind of remember that Snake Eyes is a white guy with blonde hair, uh, but I mean, I don't know. I'm not attached enough to really care really beyond that. I guess I, as long as the character still works, then um, I'm intrigued. And Henry Golding, the only thing is he's a really good looking dude. So uh, so to cover up his face, uh, I'm like, I'm curious to see how they're going to to go that route, because I imagine he's going to talk. I think he takes a vow of silence was like one of the things that part of his origin. Um, so I'm curious to see how they do that. If, if maybe this is the movie where he talks the whole time and then by the end of the movie, he makes the vow of silence and then, you know, and then wears the mask permanently after that. I don't know. So we'll see. But it is an origin story. So I'm going to guess that's probably the route they're going to go. Uh, there's also Andrew Koji, who's playing Storm Shadow, uh, director Robert Schwent uh, Schwenke and executive producer Eric Halsen and Iko Uwas, who uh, is playing the character Hardmaster. And the movie comes out October 23rd of this year, 2020. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm so excited. When I started following the G.I. Joe movie page, I think I was like the 14th follower that they had. Um, now they have a ton more. They're over 1,000 followers now. So if you want to follow them at G.I. Joe movie on uh, Instagram and I think on Twitter. And the Twitter account is funny because that's it, it's the original G.I. Joe Twitter account. Like if you go back and look through 
its feed, uh, it's pretty neat because there's uh, there's some cool, you know, uh, there's some stuff in there from The Rock, you know, when he was in the second movie and, uh, and Bruce Willis. They mentioned Bruce Willis and they mentioned, uh, you know, Channing Tatum from the first movie. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I thought it was a, a neat to go down that memory lane because those movies aren't great. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't mind them so much when they came out. They were OK. But this one I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by and I really hope that they. Uh, they do actually connect it. I think uh, Skydance is like, you know, producing it, which I think is Tom Cruise's production company. And the biggest thing I heard in interviews and stuff was that the director, um, who, you know, he hasn't made a ton of good stuff and the writers haven't worked on a ton of good stuff either. But I always feel like uh, when it comes to things like that, I, I want to give people a chance still because you never know. You know, there's some people are maybe born to make a G.I. Joe movie. Some people are born to make Marvel movies. Some people are born to make, you know, independent films and they do really good jobs at doing that. So it's like, I feel like everyone finds their groove. And so I'm willing to give anyone a chance, even if they've done stuff that I haven't really liked in the past, I still feel like giving them a chance, especially when it's on a property that I do kind of believe in. So you know, G.I. Joe, it's not a it's not a stellar movie track record. It had two movies. I think the second one with The Rock is a lot of fun for sure. Has some good action in it. But this one, they're basically the director came out and said, Yeah, we don't want to do a lot of CG in this. We actually want to make a like a, a traditional at as close as we can, because we're, you know, mostly an American production, uh, but we got a lot of, you know, Japanese cast members and stuff. But he said, you know, we're gonna do the best our, oh, that we can to make something as close to a traditional martial arts movie. And we have a lot of practical effects, a lot of stunts, a lot of people training for months at a time to get these fight scenes right. And that right there is what intrigued me because I grew up on Bruce Lee movies and, you know, and, and traditional martial arts movies. And I am such a fan of that genre. And I feel like it's so hard to bring that genre to American audiences. There are definitely people here that watch those movies. But, you know, I, I mean, I worked at Blockbuster for years. And every time I would recommend a movie that was made in China or South Korea or Japan and it had subtitles, you know, most people were just like, yeah, I'm not watching a movie with subtitles. And I'm like, man, you're missing out because the fights in these movies are amazing. Even if you don't read the text and follow the story, like there's still great you know, stuff in these movies. You know, if you're going to be that stubborn, like you can ignore the text, but watch the visuals. Uh, that's how much I, I like, you know, a lot of those movies. And when I worked at Blockbuster, I pushed them hardcore. And I remember when Jet Li became really big after Lethal Weapon 4, I was working at Blockbuster and they started re-releasing a bunch of Jet Li movies from like the early to mid 90s and late 90s in the US on DVD and stuff like that, you know, to kind of because his name was, you know, he became a bigger name here in the States. And uh, I loved his interpretation of Fist of Legend, which is, I think, a remake of an old Bruce Lee movie. And Jet Li is so good in that. And the fight scenes are amazing. So whenever I think and hear someone say, hey, we want to make like a martial arts movie, like traditional martial arts movie or, try, or do our best to get as close as we can. That excites me, and that's really what is the impetus for this video. Is when I heard the director say that. Now, will the movie turn out to be like that? Maybe not. Maybe he shoots it a certain way, shoots the action a certain way, and then maybe some editors come in and some executives get involved and they they edit it all to hell and they they chop it up and they do what a lot of movies do nowadays, which is like this boring handheld camera where they do like 20 cuts in like the span of like 30 seconds uh, to make the action look like a rapid fire and stuff. And it's like, well, there's a difference between like uh, the mo what movies did that. Like I think the Jason Bourne movies did that. But they did it pretty well to where they would pull back from time to time and you would see the space that each character is fighting in and you would see the battles. But then there would be movies like um, Taken or something like that or one of those, you know, uh, um, Liam Neeson movies where he's just, you know, he's an older guy. But they they try to make it to look like he can kick a bunch of butt and they cut 20 times in 30 seconds and it just cuts around all the action. You don't even see some of the impact of some of the shots because they're so lousy at editing those movies. And so for me, I'm just like, yeah, I, I don't want something like that. I want if they shoot it a certain way and they do traditional, you know, uh, effects on, uh, you know, practical effects on on set and they do traditional fighting and choreography. I want to see that. I, want, I really want that to shine in the movie. So hearing that is neat because I think that's such a great blend for a genre. Like it's like, all right, we're going to make this big budget American action movie, but we want the action scenes to be like this traditional martial arts style. And I know some people will be like, oh, well, they did that with Matrix and they did that with like, you know, uh, John Wick and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, there's elements of those in those movies. But really, the way they cut and edit and shoot those, um, they're more gritty, especially the John Wick movies. They're way more gritty, and so they're not traditional 
they're act- traditional action movies in a, in a sense, and they they up the ante a lot in a lot of their action scenes. But they're not like this, like you know, they're not like a a, a Fist of Legend or something, you know. So uh, and 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 Fist of Legend, I, I like because it's it's like pre Crouching Tiger. Like I think a lot of people when they think martial arts movies that are younger, they might be like, oh, like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It's like, yeah, that was great because there was like a dance to it and there was beauty to it and the way it was shot. But when movies started ripping that off, I'm like, you're ripping it off and you don't know why you're ripping it off. You're just doing it for the visual, but not for the the elements of it. You know, you're not doing it because it matters to the story. So no, I'm I'm hoping at least that this is more before Crouching Tiger and more uh, along the lines of something like, uh, you know, Fist of Legend or, or these older, you know, martial arts movies. So uh, I'm going to take the director at his word for that right now. And we're going to just hope for the best. <laughs> and we'll, we'll touch up on that as we see trailers and other things coming out. But yeah, this was basically them on January 9th getting at the shrine. They were getting this uh, amazing blessing. And like I said, I'll have some of the video playing and I'll just have everything on repeat because I'm talking a lot longer than I originally thought I would. Uh, but then like Henry Golden shared some images. Um, so I'll try to put that right here where you can see it's this awesome black and white image. First official image of them filming on Snake Eyes with him walking up the stairs and he's in his like, you know, traditional outfit or not. He's not wearing the Snake Eyes outfit, it looks like, but he's wearing like traditional clothing um, as he's uh, ascending the stairs. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious and I love that it's black and white. You know me, I love black and white. Um, but he posted this image on February 5th, which was Henry's birthday. And he said, you know, it's because it's my birthday. I'm playing Snake Eyes. Here's your first look at Snake Eyes. And I love that he tweeted it and or Instagrammed it and then tweeted it. And then also the G.I. Joe account did the same and they reposted his his original post. So, yeah, I mean, just really cool. And I like how they're taking this very seriously. Like, of course, it's a little bit of a, a, a show, like a spectacle. They're like, all right, we're going to go get this blessing, you know, and everything like that. But you know, and I know that's good for cameras and it, you know, it shows that they're showing respect, but like I said, it does show that they're showing respect. They, they're like, Hey, we're going to get this blessing cause we're going to film at this temple and it's a big deal, you know, and, and, and getting permission to film in some of these locations, um, especially in like, you know, Japan and China and other countries that have these, you know, great buildings and these great architectures and these, you know, a lot of history in their buildings. It's uh, it is scary cause you're like, I don't want a film crew coming through here and stomping through everything and breaking stuff. Um, so to get a blessing into, into, you know, step into these temples and to get the chance to film with them as your backdrop is, is nothing short of amazing. I'm telling you right now, it's not an easy thing to do. And sometimes you need either a traditional movie made, you know, in Japan to get that done or a, a lot of money to get that done. And so it's, it's, it's going to be neat. I think the movie will at least have hopefully a very, very unique look to it. Uh, but that'll be yet to be seen right now. We just have these images and these posts and uh, I just want to share them with you guys. And like I said, I cycled in some other pictures that I saw from other cast members. I try to have those like, you know, pop up uh, here and there too. So you can kind of see that all the other actors, cause I, I didn't mention Sam weaving, but Samantha weaving, she's playing, um, Scarlet in the movie. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. So we're going to see Scarlet in this film. Um, and I think we're going to see the Baroness too. I think there's a lady named Ursu, um, who is going to be playing, uh, you know, the Baroness. So um, I'm excited. I'm, I'm willing to give this movie a chance. I'm willing to see where it goes. And I hope you guys are too. So every once in a while, until all are one, I'll definitely cover some of the movie news, but I'll wait till a bunch of it comes out or I'll just wait till there's some cool behind the scenes stuff or a trailer reaction. We'll do all that. We'll, um, we'll, you know, we'll continue to do that here on this show, but you probably only just get like one a month, like one GI Joe focused episode a month, unless there's a ton of news that I have to cover. But otherwise, uh, I feel like this is a good place for it. So hopefully you guys, um, enjoy it, enjoyed this episode and check it out. And if you did like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And as always, leave your comments down below and we'll continue our conversation down there. Let me know what you think of these images. Uh, they're breathtaking and you got to check them out on GI Joe uh, on Instagram and Twitter. You can find the video without me talking over it and you can see a lot of these pictures from the cast members. So be sure to follow them as well. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace. Stop! Stop! Uh, I am Bumblebee, your oldest friend. Optimus, I would lay down my life for you.